In this video, we're going to talk about Fender Ultras. We're going to be talking about the old Fender Ultras. We don't want to get confused with the Ultras that Fender is selling today, which I would refer to as the new Fender Ultras. We're going to talk about the Fender Ultras that came out in 1990. We know that Fender came out with the Strat Plus series in late 1987, then the Strat Plus Deluxe in 1989, and then in 1990 there was a big revolutionary change and the Strat Plus Deluxe took on four colors and the Ultra Series was released. And this is the Ultra Series right here. And they kind of changed over the years. This one here is referred to as Ebony Burst. And you can see the flame tops here on these. These Ultras were really quite special. Of course, they came with either early on in 1990, 91, they came with Schaller or Spurzel locking tuners. This one has the Schallers, the Wilkinson roller nut, real solid black ebony with real abalone inlays, which is really a cool feature. Uh, if you've never played ebony before, you're really missing out because it's an open wood, like rosewood. It doesn't have a clear coat over it, and it's really slick. And then just check out this one. This is um, a color that they only made for one year, being called an ebony burst. Now this is thing is really confusing, and we're going to talk a little bit more about bursts and frost. But the funny thing was, this particular finish, when it came out um, on the Ultra, it was called a burst. But when it came out on the Strat Plus Deluxe the same year, it was called a frost. And so here are some of the colors. This is a ebony burst. This is a blue burst. And then this is a crimson burst. These are all 1990, 91. And then here's the firestorm. It's really hard in the lighting in this room to really see the firestorm finish on this. It's a more of a dark one. And then going up into the night, later 1990s, they came out with these really nice quilt tops. And this is antique burst again. And then this is blue burst. And then this is crimson burst. And the 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 grain on these is just incredible. But getting back to what these guitars consisted of, they all had maple tops, and a lot of the 1990, 91, 92, 93, they had double A or triple A flame tops. And so the flame was more kind of like this, and they came with the blue, and early on, a gold lace sensor in the middle, and then two lace sensors in the bridge called the lace sensor dually, which was, you know, mechanized by this little switch right here, which you can't see very well at this angle. But later on, they went to the same kind of configuration that the Strat Plus Deluxe had, and that's using a silver in the middle position. This is really a rare color and a very, very unique. Now, they kept this same color scheme all the way up into 1994 about. But what happened was in 1991, they added this Firestorm finish. And they made that for basically just two years. And then they uh, also added in 1995 the uh, Stars and Stripe, which was an aluminum body ultra. I've had a couple of the Strat Plus Deluxes in that aluminum body, but I've never owned an ultra. Then 1996, they came out with a Crimson Burst, Blue Burst, Antique Burst, and Mystic Black. I don't have a Mystic Black in my collection here, but then 1997 they went to just black. The Firestorm finish only lasted two years, and the Stars and Stripes was only one year, 1995. It's interesting because when you look at this finish here, this particular finish with the really, really dark edges around it in the Strat Plus Deluxe is called a frost, but when you're dealing with the Ultras, it's called a burst. This is the Crimson Burst right here, really, really nice, nice flame in it. And then Fender really went out and went for the quilted ones, the quilted finishes in 96, 97, and very, very early 98. These are such beautiful guitars. And of course, some of them came out with this Blanda bridge. My friend George Blanda designed these for Fender. You can loosen these little hex screws right here, and then 
pull the string out, cut off the end, put the new string in and tighten it down. And the tremolo bar that goes into this actually has a small hex screw, uh, a hex wrench built into the end of it that goes right into the end of these. So you can use the tremolo bar for string changes. Make string changes really fast. Pop the string in, cut the string off, pop the string in, tighten it down, then feed it through the roller nut and then through the locking tuner and cut it off and you're ready to tune. What happened too was in late 19, well mid-1993, they went to the LSR roller nut. Some people prefer these because it's easier for string changes and you can use an assortment of different string sizes. But early on it was all the Wilkeson nuts. Now part of the feature for part of the features for the um, Ultra series was all chrome plated parts. That means even the bridges were chrome plated. Like I shared before in some of my other videos, the dually is two separate pickups and it's controlled by this mini switch. And so when you push this mini switch down like that, that direction, it turns on this back lay sensor and this is a red lay sensor, very hot lay sensor. You put the switch in the middle position, then it's these two pickups in series. And then you move that switch forward, it is this upper pickup. And the distance of these pickups from the bridge make different tones for the pickup. And then with the super switching, of course you go to position number three right there, then that is neck plus bridge. So it has a lot of different flavors and then the ebony is just so nice on these. Let's see if we can get a better look at this firestorm finish. There's some spray of light coming in here right now. Look at this. Oh, this is some light coming in through the window. Look at that. When the light hits it, it just starts to pop out like a stop sign in the middle of the night with your high beams on. You can see what Fender did. With these, they used kind of more of a, just a dark metallic color around the edges that is the same color, it's a transparent color. Then what they did is they shot like a silver base coat around the edges of these like 96, 97 uh, Ultras and then clear coated it with a transparent clear coat. So it makes the edges be um, kind of dark, but it's the same color where when you go to this one, you can see this is a crimson burst too. It's actually a black edge. It makes sense for me to call this a burst because of the fact it has a black edge. But then when you go over and look at this one and you look at the edge, it's just a, a dark silver. Check out this blue. It's, you can really see it there. Dark blue metallic around the edges. And then look at that flame. That's yeah, really cool. This is the same thing here with the black around the edges. And you can see the flame in that. Early on with the Ultras, they used a double A and triple A flame, sometimes four A flame. But then by the time they got up into the later years, they were using four and five A flame on the tops and backs. These are all quilt, what they call quilt bursts. And these here are like the tiger stripes. In it. You can see it really, really clearly here. It's more of a tiger stripe flame in it. And the same with this one. These guitars are the highest in production guitar made by Fender without going in the custom shop. And if you take them apart, you'll often find that the builders of these guitars were the guys who worked in custom shop. It's not unusual to see Glastium or, or uh, a Nump Hector Montez or some of these other guys that were master builders, who went on to be master builders, were the ones who actually built these guitars for Fender. One thing I wanted to point out, and I've shared this a number of times on different videos, is how the pickups work on these Ultra guitars. 
And this design here is called a dually. It's two independent lay sensor pickups strapped together side by side. And they're controlled by this mini switch. And when you push this mini switch back like that, this rear red lay sensor turns on and it gives it a, a hot bite, kind of a British invasion uh, Telecaster bridge sound. And then you move this mini switch here to the middle position and it's these two pickups in series. And when you have it set there, you notice that the sound, it gets a little bit fatter and uh, more beefy sounding because um, it doubles the resistance output for these pickups. And then you move this here to the upper position and then it's this upper red hot lace sensor. And the distance from the bridge makes a different kind of sound. This has got a little bit more of a, a nasal tone strati sound. You set this on position um, number two and then you got this pickup and the middle pickup together and you can get some really nice different sounds with it. Then when you're in position five here, you have the neck pickup, which is a blue lay sensor. It's kind of like a 1950s PFA humbucker, or some people say it sounds kind of like a P90. When you put it in position four, you have traditional strat switching, which is the neck plus the middle, which is a gold lace on, on these. And then you go to the middle position here, position three. This is where the super switch kicks in. And now you have the neck and the bridge pickups together, which is different than on a typical Strat number three position is the middle pickup, but on the super switch, it's the neck plus bridge. And then I already talked about this position and then the bridge position for this red lace dually. Quite a versatile arsenal of sounds. Now I wanna show you what is called a set neck ultra. And this is a custom shop guitar. Check out the flame, it's like a blonde natural flame. This is a 5A flame top, and it's an ultra configuration. Fender never really referred to these as being an ultra, but what they really are is an ultra that is a set neck. And we talk about set necks. Here's what we're really talking about. You can see that this neck doesn't have a neck plate. It's solid. But this was part of a series that ran for about five years. It was called a set neck Stratocaster came in two versions. One version was the Ultra version that is like this model using the same kind of pick guard that you would find on a Fender Ultra, ebony fretboard and such, abalone inlays, and then super, super nice flame top. And then the other ones were the same configuration as far as the wood and such, but the pickups were, I think, two, T, um, two Texas Specials and then a bridge pickup that was a... Uh, Seymour Duncan um, pickup of some sort. I can't remember what kind of Seymour Duncans they used in that right off the top of my head. This is a beautiful guitar. It, it came with a certificate showing that um, it is truly a custom shop guitar and it's got all the, the paperwork and everything in here that came with it. These are really rare and quite valuable. I've had a couple of these. One of them I sold to a guy in Kuwait. He shipped it all the way over there. And that was pretty pricey, but it went in a private collection. And that one had a solid black back and tiger stripe, stripe flame in the front rather than the quilt flame. I really like the quilt myself. <laughs>